Hey traders, Roggy here, and let's talk about what transpired during what was a very dramatic FOMC meeting minutes session. Now the markets were already sloping lower, as you can see, this is a five minute chart of the NAS, and then at 2 p.m., which would be right about here, you can see the candle, we really accelerated and pushed down uh, into the close. So kind of a weak close. And so first first thing is don't fade a weak close. Uh, we have a saying, don't fade Fridays, meaning you know don't buy into the weakness on a Friday, wait for the Monday to level out. Well, I'll say the same thing. I'll, I will not be surprised to see a little bit of weakness in the morning, which I actually am excited about because it could get us a few more moderate to conservative level entries that we can continue to scale into. But the topic for our video here today is we know that today was going to be a volatile day, up or down, don't know. But what we have preceding the FOMC, and you can see it right here, is an overbought zone. So let's get specific about this zone, right? When do we start reaching the 80 level? Right in here, okay? When did we start coming down out of the 80 level? right there. You can see how the way that this slow stochastic works is a slow stochastic. I talked about the details of it. It's an 80 overbought, 20 oversold. That's 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 default. Okay. So it all uses the 80 in here. Um, I don't use these. You don't have to put the upper and middle lines in there if you don't have to. Um, but it is nice to see the middle of the zone. Uh, but anyway, uh, 80, 20, and then the settings are, there you go, 21 uh, percentage K, 3 percentage D. And if you have any of these other settings, the smoothing, here, here are the settings, right? Really easy. It's the same stochastic setting I have used for 30 years. It's an old school tool. Now, it is a slow stochastic. I do not use a regular stochastic. Um, that might be the little unusual part of this because a lot of folks use regulars. I had never have. I like the slower. I want this thing to slow down. I want this to give me fewer twitchy. We don't want a twitchy indicator, right? So we want it to slow down and that's the best way that I've known to do it. Okay, so take a look. It, I don't want to short while this is still on the upslope into that zone, which is why I like the color coding. Uh, look, I started getting cataracts about four years ago. I, I have very young onset cataracts. I mention that because I know a lot of folks have vision issues like myself. And so having the color coding, having some nice, clear, thick lines really does help. So until this goes red, I don't want to think about the shorts. And you can see where it went red. Let's drop another vertical line right in here. Okay, so that's what you're remembering. Hey, this is a choppy market. Does the stochastic know it's a choppy market? No, the stochastic does not know it's a choppy market. That is the job of the lower row of the JT multi telling me that we're in chop and have been in chop since the beginning of December. Since we're in chop, this is actually pretty close to being oversold and it would send us higher right there in the beginning of December. And this is where we become overbought. So I'm not saying this suggests the scale of the move lower, but we shouldn't be surprised. The other thing, if you watch the analysis that we did towards the end of December, where I discussed what the Santa rally really does, the Santa rally typically takes what is historically a choppy December and drives price to the upper end of the range. Now, I won't talk about the S&P in the same light. The S&P is borderline an uptrend now, two green grab candles in a row. Uh, this is really borderline a buy the dip conversation that I'll start looking at at about 46.62, all right? Or, or even the 55 exponential. So the S&P is different than this overbought, oversold conversation that is valid for the NASDAQ and for the Dow. All right, let's talk about the Dow. We are looking at a choppy market. It has been choppy for some time, right? We want to see price action get, like I like to see price action get above the 80. So I want to visibly see these lines above 80, which you can see happen right in here. That's the first step. Let's just get this thing ab above 80. All right. Okay. 
Now these are still green, so this is green, 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 until right in here it starts to go red. Again, starts to go red. Now we know it's starting to chip away at that bullish momentum. So here, exhausting. Again, here, exhausting. Now, when do you really start to see the acceleration? Usually when price gets back down through the 80. Okay, that's usually what you're waiting for. Take a look back in here, back down through the 80. It went red right in here, right? That's a really good place to start thinking about, hey, this is exhaustive. It didn't go much higher, did it? And then once it broke down through the 80, right? Now we're talking. So that's what I'm talking about. Is it is it magic? No, it's it's like reading the environment, but this is the last step. First step is gotta be the structure because is this even valid in a double green? No way. A stochastic doesn't know that a market's trending or not trending. It only has the algorithm that it has and it crunches the numbers. We talked about this when I did the uh, crude oil update. Uh, if you want to check that out. So same idea here. I'd like to see this get down through 80. Now, if you recall, when I talked about the seasonal factors for January, I said, look, there's usually a little divot and then the market starts getting bullish again. What I'd like to see in something like the NASDAQ and why is the NAS so important? The number one weighted sector is the XLK. This is the number one sector in the NASDAQ. It's the number one sector in the S&P. It's the number two sector in the Dow. This XLK is hugely important, all right? And the NASDAQ is weighted really and will move very similarly to the XLK. So if you wanna look at the XLK, I would look at that too. What I'd like to see is this get down to this Darvis support and it's gonna be a Darvis support area that takes us around this area to this area. See, it's a zone, all right? I'd also like to simultaneously see, it's not necessary, but it would be great confirmation that we start to close in on this 20 area on the STO. So I've got a price-based support level, and then I confirm that with the secret squiggle. No secret squiggle, that's my little cute name for indicators, leads price, none of them. If it needs price, it cannot lead price. But this is what we're looking at. So I don't look at this as something that should be surprising. FOMC meeting minutes, oversold market. Uh, I think the S&P is still the relative outperformer because of healthcare and financials coming on very strong. And I think we need to all keep an eye on the XLK for uh, support. It's a double green environment. I'd love to see maybe, even if we, look at this volume ledge right in here. I'd love to see a minor low in this area and then we'll look for buys in XLK as well. XLK could very well be how all three indices are signaled to start moving higher again. All right, I know that's kind of an in-depth conversation, but I think today was a really important day. Don't get bearish yet. It's just chop moving down to what could be bullish opportunities for us. All right, if you have any questions as always, leave them down in the comments, smash that like button on the way out. Thanks as always for the time and I'll see you in the next update. Hey traders, Ragi from Simpler Trading. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and a comment below. And remember, subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll get notified of the next update. And when you're ready to join me for live trading, be sure to head on over to simplertrading.com. I'll see you in the next update.